This lesson is on continuous and differentiable functions. We are going to work on the constant function theorem, the racetrack theorem, and two theorems which are related, and they are the mean value theorem and Rolle's theorem. Our first theorem is the constant function theorem, and it reads, if a function is continuous over closed AB, and differentiable over open AB because the function cannot be differentiable at its endpoints, and f prime is equal to zero over open AB, then the function is a constant. This is very obvious because you already know that if you have a function y is equal to five, and you take its derivative, it is equal to zero. Only they're saying this backwards. If you know a function has a derivative of zero, then you know it to be a constant function. And that's all there is to this particular theorem. So if you know the function's derivative is zero, then you know the function is a constant on an interval or over the entire function. Our second theorem is really called the racetrack principle. And it reads, given two functions, f of x and g of x, if f prime of x is greater than are equal to g prime of x, then f of x is greater than g of x. And we can give an example of that. Let's say we have the function f of x is equal to x, and g of x is equal to 2x. We know that f prime is equal to 1 here, and g prime is equal to 2 there. We know that the function g of x equals 2x is greater than the function f of x equals x when x is greater than 0. In the racetrack principle, we need a starting point. In this case, it is at 0. And of course, the g prime of x is greater than the f prime of x when x is greater than 0. And of course, we can say that vice versa. Given two functions, f of x and g of x, if f prime of x is less than or equal to g prime of x, then f of x is less than or equal to g of x. Let's use the racetrack principle to show how to compare two functions. And the functions we want to compare are ln of x and x minus 1. Now, if we put both of these functions on our calculator, our two functions are ln of x and x minus 1. If we graph these in a zoom 4, we see that the line is actually the tangent line to the curve of ln of x. And let's just check to make sure they are tangent. If we get an intersecting point, they will be tangent. So we'll go to second calc intersect, and we'll get our first curve, our second curve, and it will come shortly. And they intersect at 1, x equal to 1, and y is equal to 0. So we do have that intersecting point. So we have a tangent line and a curve. Now if we look at this, before we get to the intersecting point, the slope on the tangent line is less than the slope on the curve. And this is because the curve has to reach the point of tangency. And then after that, the slope on the tangent line is greater than the slope on the curve. So this is what we have to show, that the slope on one is less than the slope on the other before the point of tangency, and after the point of tangency, it is greater. We have the function here, f of x is equal to ln of x, and g of x is equal to x minus 1. That's the line and the tangent line. All right, so we take f prime of x, and we get 1 over x. We take g prime of x, and we get 1. And I said when x is between 0 and 1, the slope on the curve will be greater than the slope on the tangent line. And sure enough, any numbers that you put in here will be greater, like 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 third, et cetera, et cetera, 3 fourths, will be greater than 1. So f prime of x is greater than g prime of x. When x is greater than 1, then g prime should be greater than f prime. And if we put any number in here beyond 1, into your f prime beyond 1, like 2, 3, 4, 5, 1.5, of course, that will be less than the g prime. So that means g prime 
of x will be greater than f prime of x. And that is how you use your racetrack principle to show one function is less than another function. Let's go on to another theorem, the mean value theorem. If f is continuous over closed AB and differentiable over open AB, then there exists a C between A and B such that f prime at C, the derivative of C, is equal to f of B minus f of A over B minus A. Well, let's look at this graphically. If we have a curve and we make a point A and a point B on the curve, and we draw the secant line that connects the two points, we have a slope of f of b minus f of a over b minus a. This theorem tells us that there is some point on our curve, c, somewhere where the slope of the line at c is equal to the slope between a and b. That's our mean value theorem. Well, let's do an example on that. Given f of x is equal to sine x over the interval 0, pi over 2. Verify that f satisfies the hypothesis of the mean value theorem and find c. Well, one hypothesis is that it's continuous over 0 to pi over 2. And sine is certainly continuous over 0 to pi over 2. Two, that it's differentiable over 0 to pi over 2. Don't forget, these are parentheses, these are brackets. The sine wave definitely is differentiable over 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so it's continuous and differentiable. Now we can find c. So the first thing we're going to do to find c is to take the derivative of sine. So f prime of x is equal to cosine x. The next thing we're going to do is to find f of b minus f of a over b minus a f of b is the sine of pi over 2, which we know to be 1, minus the sine of 0 is 0, over b minus a, which is pi over 2, minus 0, which is pi over 2. And that gives us 2 over pi. So now we know that cosine of c is equal to 2 over pi. So that makes c equal to the arc cosine of 2 over pi. Well, let's look at our calculators and maybe we can see how this works on our calculator. So let's graph the function sine x and use a window of 0 to pi over 2 for x's and negative 1 to 1 for y's. And our graph will look like this. Okay. Next, I'm going to draw the tangent line at arc cosine of 2 over pi. So we'll use the draw function and tangent and do arc cosine of 2 divided by pi. And there it comes. All right, and now I'm going to draw the line that connects 0 and pi over 2. So We'll go to the draw feature again. We're going to do a line. And this time we're going to come down and go to the left. And get to 0, 0. OK, press Enter. Go to the right. and bring it up to the end of my curve. And we can see, once I have done that, that the two lines are indeed parallel to each other. OK? So this is your mean value theorem. Let's go on to our next theorem, Rolle's theorem. If f is continuous over closed AB and differentiable over open AB, and f of A equals f of B, and sometimes you will see that that has to equal 0, but it's not necessarily so, 
then there exists a C between A and B such that F prime of C equals F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Well, that's the mean value theorem, but we're going to add one more thing to it. That has to equal zero. And that's because F of B and F of A are equal. And if we drew this, it would look something like this. This would be A, this would be B, and this is would be where C is, that horizontal tangent line. So let's do an example on this. Given f of x is equal to sine x over the interval 0 pi, verify that f satisfies the hypothesis of Rolle's theorem and find c. So let's do that. So 1, it's continuous over 0 to pi, closed ab. 2, it's differentiable over open ab, 0 to pi. And this one needs another piece to it. We have to verify that f of a equals f of b. So f of pi is equal to sine of pi, which is equal to 0. f of 0 equals sine of 0, which is equal to 0. So f of a does equal f of b. So we'll go on and find c. So f prime of x is equal to cosine x f of b minus f of a over b minus a is equal to 0 minus 0 over pi, so that's equal to 0. So now we have cosine x is equal to 0, therefore x is equal to pi over 2, which you already knew because the middle between 0 and pi is pi over 2, and that's where sine reaches its maximum point. This ends our discussion of theorems about continuous and differentiable functions.